M. Burb, the captain, here with Hip Hop since 1987. Y'all know what it is, the plus grandson, Capo Music. Let's get it. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. What's good? It's your boy Rick Dange here with somebody that if you haven't heard of him yet, you're about to really start seeing his name popping up. 2019 kicking off. Yes, My sir. guy and Burb. What's good with you, bro? Right, man, what's good with you? I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling, man. Appreciate you coming to Philly. I mean, a lot of people don't know we in Philly right now. And a little hip hop since 1987. North Philly, nigga. They right, right. by the by the crack spot. <laughs> <laughs> We, as a matter of fact, we seen dude half naked on the corner before we got over here. <laughs> now, for the people that don't know you, um, tell them where you're from and um, let them know how you got your name. Man, I'm from Manassas, Virginia, man. I'm like, I got my name. We was coming up with rap names like high school, fresh out of high school type, like. But really, it just it was random because Northern Virginia is like the the suburban region of dc it's not city city like like dc is right you know what i'm saying so i took the i took the suburban with urban you know what i'm saying mixed it with 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 my name is mike miguel my real name i have puerto rican miguel i don't leave that junior okay i don't speak spanish so i'm a <laughs> nigga you know what i'm saying but <laughs> but now nah, but yeah just use the 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 m for manassas you know what i'm saying okay. from manassas where we get money the fastest okay so you so, know it's VA. Virginia, Northern Virginia. What was life like for you growing up in VA? I mean, growing up in Virginia, it was it was pretty it was pretty good. Like I had both of my peoples. Okay. I, you know what I'm saying? I got a brother. You know, um I was always up to New York. Uh, my pops from Coney Island. So I was always in the pink building. If y'all familiar with Coney Island, you know where the pink building is. Right. I was always in the pink building every summer. And my mom's from Atlanta, we're well, from Georgia, so I was always down there, back and forth. So, really, Virginia is is, is slow pace. It's it's the South, but it's it's still the the middle of the South and the East. So, right, it's different. I mean, you, we still got hoods out there. We got sure. everywhere. It's I just, got a lot of family in Virginia. Yeah, it's just different. It's a little different. You know what I mean? Okay. You got a lot of people fake representing it, but that's why M. Burb is here. You feel me? Okay. Okay. Now, what actually got you in the rap? Shit, my cousin, my my cousin from New York, he was actually rapping with this artist named Five Mikes, who okay. signed a Ti Grand okay. Hustle and a uh, Lil Duval. So they had put out music back in two thousand three, early, and I used to listen to my cousin rap. Then my cousin got on a song with Uncle Murder. Okay, and and uh, Blase, you remember Blase? Yeah, yeah. You remember the song called Make a Living? I don't remember the exact it's, song, but I remember Blase. Yeah, it was a sample. It was him, Uncle Murder, and my cousin, Anthony. They called him Shady. He was okay. on there. So when I seen him on 106 at Park right. for months, I'm like, right. I'm about to start rapping. You know, so that saying? was your motivation right yeah, there. Yeah, seeing my cousin on there. And then, you know, kept doing it. People around my area was making music, linked up with a few people. Okay. Just, yeah, it kept grinding. Now, you you from VA, but like you said, you right. pop from New York. Your mom from Georgia, uh, so you got a lot of mixes of different areas that you were going through growing right. up. How would you describe your style, and how do you feel like going to New York and going to Georgia affected your style? I want to say my style is I'm in I'm I'm in the hip hop heavy. I like the boom bap hip hop, okay. but I also like everything. Like I like all the new music. Everything every time the music starts changing, I change with the music. Right. So from listening to up north music from my pops, you know what I'm saying? Like the lyric the lyrical, the punchlines, like saying witty things and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 being cocky, you know what I'm saying, with the lyrics. Right. But then from Georgia, like I I went to church with my grandma one time. She used to catch the holy holy ghost, like the <laughs> real holy ghost. You know what I'm saying? But it's just the the bass, the the snares, you know what I'm saying, the melody and just mixing both of that up. If you can mix your lyrics uh, punchlines with being a little melodic not trying to do too much getting the right beats and that's wow. what I like doing I, I like doing 
some turn up music like that, but I still want to say something. I just don't want to. Right, right, you know right. You want, you, say your music has substance. Right. Okay. So with that being said, who's your favorite current artist? And who's your favorite artist of all time? My favorite current artist. Um. Shit. My current artist as of who I'm. Matter of fact, yeah, who are you listening to right now? Who I'm listening to right now? I'm listening to A Boogie. Okay, shout out A Boogie. Styles Davies. Shout out to Styles and uh, uh, Davies. Meek, you, you know, Meek. Definitely shout, shout out, out to Philly. Meek. Fuck with Meek, heavy. Um, yeah, man. Uh, Jim Jones, Dipset. Shout out to Capo. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's not too many, you know. I mean, uh, female singers, you know what I'm saying? Now, how do you feel about the climate of the rap industry right now? Music in general right now, 2019. Now I feel like it's it's getting to what people really want to hear and not okay. what people was forced to okay. hear. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not saying that the music that was coming out is, is garbage or like nobody want to hear it. It's just like sometimes people really want to hear substance music. Yeah, for sure. And I remember going, I remember when I was going to the clubs young, Sneaking in the clubs and they was playing straight hip-hop music and everyone's in the club going crazy. Yeah So it's like they don't mix it enough. They over right. they keep one genre in the front. So I Mean I don't know it just changed. I feel like it's not that many Hard to say like a real like you could tell who's a real artist who's yeah. really on or went through whatever It's yeah, not yeah. that many of those. No okay. okay, it's different the game different so Speaking on yourself, what will make you differ from other artists that's in the game right now? And then specifically, what makes you differ from art other artists coming out of VA? Uh, well, I want to say, my I feel like my sound is definitely different than a lot of artists coming from Virginia. Okay. My sound is different. Um, me being different in the game, I mean, sh people could look, they could, they could Google me and look up all my information. I, I'm a real independent artist like, right okay ain't nobody give me no bag ain't nobody give me no ch nothing you know what i'm saying independent grind took l's <clears throat> got them wins i'm talking about from the open mic days like yeah you know what i'm saying i i've been grinding all the way from then so people can see the real the real come up on a real independent artist so a northern virginia artist because we got virginia artists but it's different yeah va big it's, it's like yeah. pennsylvania saying that you just philly is totally different than another Facts. part of pennsylvania so yeah, I mean, you know, my my style, my, my, my voice is different, my style is different, you know. I'm, you know, I'm just uh, I'm half Puerto Rican, half black. I'm I'm the new Nori. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey man, now I know you had signed to an independent label a few years ago, right? But like you said, now you're 100 percent independent artist on your own, right? Um, what do you like better about being independent 100 percent on your own? I mean, that, around that time, that was like 2012, it was some, uh, this kid, I, well, he's not a kid, but somebody I grew up with, Okay. they had a friend who said he had, he came in on some money, well, he was over yeah, the label. Yeah, 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 for sure. Me, 2012, it was me and my boy, we were staying, it was me and two of my peoples, we were staying in this apartment. Yeah. And this joint was raggedy, bro. I'm talking about, I'm recording in the, off the laptop, no windows in the room, I got pit bull puppies everywhere, weed smoke. <laughs> Just you know what I'm saying? That's I recorded a mixtape called Sour Hour around that time, okay. 2012. And then um shit was just, it was just different, bro. Like from now now from looking at it from then till now, sometimes I can't believe like damn, I've really been putting in work, you know what I'm saying? But it still feel like it's a, it's you ain't did enough, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Now, now that you're a hundred percent independent artist. What's been the biggest hurdle for you being 100% independent? The biggest hurdle for me is 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 getting people to trust your your vision. You know what I'm saying? Like people that you came up with, like getting them to to, to understand what's going on. Like listen, like it's either all the way in or not in at all. Yeah. And then when you making the, the making the moves, when you going out of state and you you touching down places you never been. Though it's you know so you don't know what's gonna happen, right. and then doing business with people, if you didn't come up or having somebody showing you certain things of the business, you don't know if you about to get got, 
know what right, I'm saying? You right. don't know what's going on. So the hurdles to me is just like learning everything on my own type. Okay. Through the game. Now, would you ever sign with a major? I mean, if uh, if I get to keep all my <laughs> publishing and all that, and they giving us a good bag, and we guaranteed we got things lined up to make whatever we owe them. Yeah. Cause get them out the way ASAP. As long as me and my team eat and. Okay. But it, it, I know it's a lot to it though. All right, let's talk about touring a little bit. Right. Um, you've really been on the road and touched a lot of places. Um, you actually were on tour with Gorilla Zoe. Right. First off, how did you meet Gorilla Zoe? Well, I met Zoe. Uh, well, my people's Alex Acosta. He's a uh, videographer for okay. Prestige Film Work. Yeah. He was on the road with Zoe, and back in the day, I remember he had Zoe give me like a little shout out, a little drop on the road. Right. So I never really met him personally. Right. I got locked up in like 2014, like the end of t towards the end of 2014, summertime to the wintertime. Okay. And I remember I got the work release and I put a post up. I was on my fake, you know, you know them jail pics people. Yeah, fake yeah, arms, for sure. I was looking right. <laughs> yeah. Took a picture and Zoe commented like, yo, as soon as you get out, come to Miami. Okay. So I'm like, damn, as soon as I got out, I went straight to probation. Yeah. I ain't sure. going to Miami, you right. know what I'm saying? So went through that. He ended up, he ended up coming out here, doing the, coming to Virginia, doing the show. I met him up there, chopped it a lot of that. Then he was like, yo, as soon as you good, uh, get you a flight to Alaska. Okay. I was, I was like, all right, bet. Got a flight to Alaska, New Year's. Did a concert New Year's. I did. I spent New Year's in Alaska. Came back. So really, I met him through Alex. But it was he kept. You know what I'm saying. He kept saying the contact. And you built a relationship yeah. off of that. So I went went to Alaska. Then after Alaska, he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna send you the itinerary where to go." And then that's when every time he hit me up, I was out. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Um, what's the biggest? Legend. What's what's definitely a legend. Um, What's the biggest lesson or the best lesson you learned from him just from being around him and being on the road? Uh, somebody offers you cocaine, <laughs> just act like you you already did something you don't want no more. <laughs> it's like, nah. <laughs> it's like, nah. Uh, the, uh, the biggest lesson I learned with Zoe, man, is the way he performed, like, you never know who's watching. And the crowd, you know what I'm saying? So, like, the way he performed is, like, a whole hour and a half nonstop. Like, you got to give everything out on the stage, bro. Like, even if you got to make it seem like nobody out there, you turning up. Then when they start interacting with you, you got to interact with the people. You got to look these people in the eye, you know what I'm saying? You got to, just the performance, like, the stage presence, I learned a lot from him. Okay. Now, you mentioned Alex Acosta. Right. Um, definitely shoot some big visuals. Um, talk to us about your last few videos that you collaborated with him on and also about how it felt seeing yourself on BET Jam. Man, yeah, the last two, um, Who Are You, <clears throat> shot by Alex Acosta. I shot in Vegas at the Dry Lake at the Desert. Yeah. I mean, at the, uh, yeah, the Desert is a dry lake, big as hell. Okay. So he, um, we pulled up to it and he had dropped the, uh, he had the Breaking Bad trailer there. Yeah. But we inside the trailer, my uh my behind the scenes other cameraman Ego, shout out uh Pigs by Ego, he was there. We inside the trailer trying to get uh AC. That ain't working. <laughs> they come and bring a toilet. Alex like, yeah, you're gonna have to sit on this toilet for the second verse, la da da. I'm sitting on this hot ass toilet in the middle of the desert doing the scene, but if you see the video, see how it come out. Yeah, it's it's working. Right, right. But yeah, that that video <clears throat> we ended up uh putting it out there uh, through distribution. But when I was doing the distribution, I didn't know BET Jams was gonna pick it up. I was trying to, like, how do I get a BET Jam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got my little report, whatever, they didn't accept it. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? I was like, look, I told you, like, you gotta bust these moves, nothing's guaranteed. Nothing yeah, sure. is guaranteed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta keep going, you gotta keep the faith. But anyway, so we shot the video. After that, I'm in the studio, in the studio, I send them work. I'm like, yo, what you think of this? I'm, I'm, am I spitting? Did I dump on this joint? He like, yo, this weekend we going to New York. We're going to shoot the video. So I'm like, all right, bet. So as we go into New York, he was like, the reason why I want to do this video is because Buster Rhymes' new artist, Prayer. Okay. That how you say his name? Uh, Fresher? No, nah, no, nah, Buster's new artist, the big dude. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Uh... Well, he got a song out that had the like the black and white vibe okay but he i, I want to say he was in queens i think in this video like the way it looked 
But um, we basically got like seeing his video was like oh, that shit hard. Like we need to have the same kind of feel with this video because of the lyrics. Okay. So we shot the video. Shout out uh Poe Grams, uh Urelli, everybody out there in uh, Brownsville. But um, we shot the scenes out there, whatever. Did the video on the way back. As soon as we got back, like the same night, Alex chopped up the video, sent it to me. He said, "Yo, I'm about to send this shit in. Fuck it." Sent the video and they hit him up the next day like, yo, we dropping this shit this weekend seven times. Mm. We're going to send you the hours. Right. So when they started dropping, I'm like, yo, I got two videos on BET Jams. If you go on my Instagram, you'll see me, like, my reaction, like, seeing yeah, it, just yeah, talking yeah. to the people, like, listen, bro, like, y'all know, like, uh, especially for everybody around my hometown, they know how long I've been grounded. They know everything I've been doing. So seeing that is like... I've been on the radio, I've been in magazines, now I'm on TV, traveling with a with a legend on the road doing shows, you know what I mean? So yeah, you're making real progress. Yeah, seeing that, it's like damn. So, like I said, that's that's super dope. Do you already know your next video you're gonna drop? Yeah. Okay, what's the next video? Actually on the way up here, Alex was like, yo, I sent him a song last night. He like, yo, we shooting this joint Sunday. So I got a new joint. That I'm, I don't even have a name for the okay. song. I just know I'm going off doing that one Sunday. But Yo No Say, my next official single, okay. that's the one I'm shooting a video to next around February. Okay. I don't want to give too many details. I want y'all to see the pics and all that. What's the record about? Um, well, Yo No Say, I don't know. That's what it means. Okay. But uh, yeah, just, just talking about, you know what I'm saying? Talking to the females. Just let them know how we get into it. Grinding. Okay. Putting in that work. All right, let's talk about this music a little bit more, man. You dropped a project called The Plug's Grandson. Right. Talk to us about that. First of all, how did you come up with the title? Why did you name it that? Man, The Plug's Grandson, man. I was chilling with my homie, man. Shout out Munch. We was just chopping it up. And he was like, man, you need to go back to your pop side, your family out there, man. You need to start bringing in, spitting that shit. Niggas don't want to hear that other bullshit you talk about. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, I just, I, I, I lean more towards my grandfather. I asked my pops, I was like, yo, would you ever do a audio biography on your dad? He was like, for what? <laughs> Left it like that. I go to the studio later that night, I'm getting these little audio clips. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sent to my phone. Right. So I'm looking at the audio clip playing them. I'm like, oh shit. So I put them, uh, me and my engineer, shout out Valor, uh, my producer engineer. Shout out my other engineer, Twist. I ain't forget about you. But, uh, we chopped it up, made a nice intro. My dad talking about my grandfather, whatever. So I used my grandfather, my, my cousin, things I've, I done did, I've been through, my homies, you know what I'm saying? Just family stuff, talking yeah. about it through the song, making songs about it. I mean, the plug's grandson. I right. mean, my granddad was, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Around that time, so rest um, in peace. He got killed by his best friend, man, over some pussy, man. That's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Production features on the project. Right, I got a uh, yeah. My people's rest in peace, Flip man. If he was, if he was, if he was alive, he he'll be here. He might be sitting. He will be sitting next to me. Probably sitting next to me right now. But I got Flip on there twice. Uh, shout out my nigga Caesar. Uh, Caesar, he got a project with Snoop. I got him on a song with him. I got him on there. I got a uh, rest in peace, my other homie, uh, Prime Time. I got his little brother Seven. I got him on a project. Uh, sh and I got Zoe on there, yeah. Me and Zoe, we right, did a song right. in Alaska. <laughs> no, we did the we did the song in a in a in a little ass house, but these white dudes had a, a studio built in the corner. But you know how people have the spray foam and the yeah, foam up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole inside is filmed with that all wood two by four straight construction type look. Yeah. But they uh we recorded in there. Right. Made a nice little banger man on there. Uh. Yeah, that's about it. I don't. Yeah, I don't think I have. Oh, I got my dad featured on there talking, so I threw that's one there. He get like a little fake feature. That's <laughs> now it's 2019. Um, you dropped the project in 2018, but do you plan on dropping another project anytime soon? Or you? I dropped the project the end of 17, really. Right, so right, 18 right. we. Ran 18 through. was the promo. So this year we're gonna get a new project. Yeah, I'm thinking about either dropping a uh, plus grandson two. I I got a. I got a lot I can, you know what I'm saying, go on, or I might make another series EP or something. Right. 
Um, if somebody's watching this and they never heard none of your music, never saw none of your videos, what's the first thing they should check out from you? First thing, I feel like they should check who are you, okay. and from who are you, go on from there. Right. But as far as visuals, but if they want to hear my music, they could just look the plus grandson up, or they can go all the way back to the syndicate or Sour Hour or me. Shout out Bucky Dollar, me and Bucky's tape, Pirate and the Captain too. So they, 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 we got a track with Dave East on there too. Right, right, right. Yeah, you work with a lot of guys. You work with my man Fat Trail. Yeah. Uh, I know you work with Dave East. Who are some other guys you've uh, you linked up with? Sure. Music wise, we did tracks with Dave East, Trail, uh, Zo. Uh, I haven't really, I haven't really reached out to do no tracks with nobody else yet. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see what's up this year though. Right, right. You got a network, man. Definitely. That's, that's the most important part. Hell yeah. As you're progressing the way you are, the network's gonna be the next. Yeah, I got. I'm just trying to get the right, right artists. You know what I'm saying? Make the right features. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You want it to be organic. You want it to be. See natural. what that check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what that check talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Now, for the people that's watching this, that, that like what you're talking about, they want to follow you on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, SoundCloud. Right. Shout them out. Uh, my SoundCloud, Emberg the Captain. I be I throw freestyles on there, going over other people's beats. But my Instagram at m b u r b Emberg, uh, Snapchat Capo in your mouth, mouth with an F. Um, yeah, Facebook Emberg the Captain, Emberg dot Captain on Facebook. That's my fan page. Make sure you uh, like that for me, man. But follow me on the gram. I follow you back. YouTube. Emberb the Captain or Emberb Vivo. You know what I'm saying? Keep up with me, man. Okay. Is there anything else you want to leave the people with before we get out of here? Oh, yeah. Uh, producers, man, if you got some beats, hit me up. Hit my email, capomusic.mb at gmail.com. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to work. I'm always in that studio. You know what I'm saying? And I, if, you, if you got your own studio, let me know. I'll pull up anywhere. Right. Work. Right. And if the shit come out fire, it may be on BET Jam, but you know we shoot so. a movie. Okay, that's what's up. Work, so. man. Anything else you want to tell the people before we get out of here? But yeah, shout out BET again for having your boy on there. Two videos at the same damn time. Work still spinning. Make sure y'all go see that. Ember Vivo. Work out now. Make sure y'all go stream that on Spotify, uh, Apple Music, uh, uh Fucking everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what, what's all this? What's all the Jones? Amazon, Tidal, yeah. Make sure y'all stream. And Napster. Napster pay the most. <laughs> Make sure y'all stream from the Napster. All right, well. Throw me good. on your playlist. When you're working out, work. Put that work in. Yes, it's, it's a good record, y'all. So definitely make sure you put it in rotation. Tap yes, that sir. thing when we get off this interview. Put on your Apple Music, your Tidal, Pandora, whatever you use. Um, but it's your boy Rick Dange here with M. Berg. Rick Danger, Bird, the captain, the plus grandson, couple music, work, nigga. If you ain't out. working, you ain't doing shit. With hip hop since 1987.com. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. Oh, man, they love what we do because it's real. This is my other half. Right here, man. Yeah. So you don't get me without him, and you don't get him without me. You know? Southside, you work with a lot of dope artists in your time. Working with a cat like this, how do you feel like? I don't want to say it's amplify your career, but it's taking you to new heights. Man, this ain't even this ain't work to me. I don't charge him no money. This my brother. I want to see him be the biggest thing in the we world. Just, we just get money together. That's, yeah, that's all, all we, we doing. Do. Yeah, like and spend that shit too. Yeah. We spending that shit too. <laughs>